A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> the Apostles and Presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who is called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. <clears throat> the apostles and the presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, and from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriages. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And so they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give you thanks among the peoples. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O my soul, awake, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted above the heaven, O, Lord, o God. Above all the earth be your glory. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I've told you everything I've heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Classically, Classically, um, both in the Greek philosophers and then kind of adapted by C.S. Lewis in a book he called The Four Loves, that he describes four particular words that um, represent four different levels of love. The first is libido, which is just plain old sexual drive, all there is to it, okay? The second is eros, and eros is actually creative love. 
Now, it can be sexual as well, but it's got to have that creative dimension to it. So you can play with words like um, procreative or creative. You can play with words like, uh, um, well, probably those are the, the, those are the good ones right there, procreative or creative. So it's something that comes out of you, okay? And, and it is a creation then that is producing something. Whether it's a child, or whether it's a work of art, or a piece of music, or a work of literature, or any other kind of work, something that comes out from you, you've done something now. So erotic love is productive love, okay? It's productive love. Then there's philia, which is the Greek word typically used for friendship. And that has a lot to do with the ways in which people look at each other. And that's important, because now that means there is an engagement in relationship. Uh, maybe most famously put by the Jewish philosopher Martin Buber when he talked about I and thou. And so it's not I and it, it's I and thou. It's the encountering of another person and the, the blending, if you like, of hearts and emotions and, and lives and whatnot to, to, to make this bond. And finally, the, the Greek word agape is used to describe love, which is the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. He wants us to have friendship love, yes, but also a dimension of love which is sacrificial, whereby we love somebody not because of the sake of the relationship, but for the sake of what can I do and be for the other person, rather than what is the benefit of the relationship itself. That sacrificial love is the utterly unself-conscious love that is being celebrated here in this particular reading. So as we hear the command we have to love one another, we know that insofar as is possible, and insofar as sometimes it happens, it doesn't, then friendship love is a good thing. It doesn't have to be that way, though, for every single person. But we do have to have a sense of willingness to have sacrificial love for one another. That's the love one another that Jesus says, the world will know that you are my disciples. That kind of love, concern, looking out for, care for one another. Don't always have to be creative with it doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't necessarily even have to be relationship, but it does have to do with concern and the willingness to be of concern for others. So, for example, most of us here don't really have a relationship of any kind with our sister parish in Tomaskalapa. Nevertheless, we have agape love for them with the activities that we do and the way in which we support them. There's the distinction there. So today, may we have all kinds of different loves, maybe all four of the four loves, but certainly at the very least, agape love. Let us stand and pray.